Ok, fiume in dire. Prova a vedere se ci sentono un attimo. Prova a vedere se ci sentono. Sentite? Prova, prova, prova. Prova, 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 prova. Prova, 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 no, arriva la luce. Ci sento. Ci sentiamo, ok. Va bene, possiamo iniziare. Che c'è? Ma ah, io chiudo seduto, se no riesco a gestire. Mi spiace se non mi alzo. Ok, good morning. Oh, sì. Noi abbiamo praticamente un'associazione di meteorologia, eh, questo è il nostro dis, dis, blog, brand, look deep into get you measure and then uh, you will understand everything better. Guardate nel profondo della natura e allora capite meglio tutto. Uh, come mi piace dire di solito a me, eh, gli scienziati non, non, non scoprono, oh, non, no, o meglio, non inventano nulla. Scopriamo ciò che già sta scritto all'interno delle leggi della natura, praticamente. Quindi, oltre a far danni, cerchiamo anche le soluzioni per, per modificare quei danni che facciamo, grazie anche comunque a quello che ci offre la natura. La natura già ci offre già tutto quello che, di cui abbiamo bisogno e noi dobbiamo solamente impegnarci nel ricreare quegli ambienti e modificare il territorio però in sinergia con l'ambiente la, uh, che ci circonda. Allora, vorrei iniziare con una piccola definizione magari di meteorologia e climatologia. Oh. Eh, no, perché se non riesco a mandare... No, andrà a prendere. Ma no, tanto lo, lo dico per me. È una piccola differenza tra la meteorologia e la climatologia, che può sembrare banale, ma che ancora oggi non, non entra all'interno della testa di tutti. Eh, la meteorologia studia i fenomeni atmosferici incidenti, quindi è un uh, indeterminato periodo di tempo che va a massimo 10 giorni. 10 giorni per noi sono per noi meteorologi, per chi fa meteorologia seria, vera, è anche molto. Di solito ci fermiamo alle previsioni vere, si fermano le tre, i tre giorni, con una tendenza sui 5-7 giorni. La climatologia invece studia l'andamento meteorologico nell'arco di tempo di più anni. Ad esempio, un periodo concreto per lo studio climatico è il periodo di 30 anni, che 
dove si stilano proprio le medie climatiche, non si possono fare dei confronti tra una media climatica e l'altra. Per parlare di cambiamento climatico, che si esso dipende da, da cause naturali o comunque antropiche, bisogna quindi fare uno studio del passato. Che, eh, solitamente negli ultimi periodi abbiamo la sensoristica metro, il satellite, eccetera, quindi riusciamo a, a immagazzinare dati. Mentre in, nel passato, ovviamente, questa cosa non avevamo, quindi dovevamo, dobbiamo far fronte. Eh, facendo delle analisi di carotaggi degli acciai, ma anche altri tipi di analisi, tipo degli alberi, chimico, fisiche. Uno degli errori che magari si sente più spesso è associare un evento meteorologico al cambiamento climatico oppure il contrario, dire un evento meteorologico, non so, fa freddo d'inverno, tanto freddo, ah, non, non esiste il riscaldamento globale, non è, non fa, non, non, non ha, le temperature non sono aumentate perché non so, abbiamo avuto un metro di neve in Alaska. perché appunto c'è bisogno di un'analisi di, di più anni e quindi di una media climatica e gli eventi estremi si, si, seguono, si sono sempre susseguiti all'interno del, del clima della terra per cui che sia freddo o caldo ci dice poco bisogna fare più un'analisi scientifica Quindi eh, faccio alcuni esempi, per, non mi appro non approfondirò con queste tematiche. Eh, alcuni esempi di cicli naturali, per esempio, sono la Ninia e il Nino, avrete sentito parlare, no? È uno dei cicli climatici che più modifica il, il tempo all'interno del globo del resto, soprattutto no, su, in alcune zone. Ci sono alcune zone che dove proprio ci sono alluvioni e dove invece porta siccità. Il monsoon. No, qual è un'altra cosa però? Sì, il monsoon è un altro. Porta però proprio soprattutto in Sud America, in alcune zone del Nord America, per esempio la California è molto soggetta a questo tipo. Anche l'Europa stessa, per esempio, negli ultimi tre anni eh, abbiamo avuto una linea strong. E strong <ride> da record. E eh, che ha portato praticamente sì, questa tradizione, questa siccità e anche venuta a questo tipo di dinamico. Ora, grazie <ride> al Nino, ci, ci ha portato un po' di, di refrigerio. <ride> Alcuni cicli climatici sono legati ovviamente alle acque superficiali del, dei nostri oceani, che ovviamente siamo un, un globo terrestre, ma a volte terra non è terra, ma è proprio globo terra acqua, appunto. E, e quindi alcuni cicli, come per esempio la PDO, sono anche di 30 anni, quindi durano veramente un sacco. 
eh, possono appunto modificare all'interno del, della circolazione atmosferica alcune dinamiche. Poi ci sono tante altre cose che sono molto Poi abbiamo i cicli di Milenkovic che sono, forse l'avete già sentito, che sono le, i periodi delle ere glaciali che durano 100.000-400.000 anni eh, e quindi poi vanno a modificare il clima all'interno di diciamo, un, 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 ambito, un, un periodo di tempo abbastanza molto ampio. Uh, the temperature anomaly in the ocean uh, Atlantic video uh, in the Pacific yes yes uh, ora Ovviamente questa cosa è la CO2 è antropica, è quella che ha modificato il, il, il clima negli ultimi cento anni, diciamo. Eh, la CO2 è un clima alterante eh, ed è presente già, cioè era già presente all'interno della Terra, altrimenti l'effetto serra insieme al vapore agueo, che è un altro clima alterante. Non è solo la CO2, c'è anche il metano, ci sono vari componenti all'interno dell'atmosfera che ci fa formano l'effetto serra. Senza l'effetto serra non ci sarebbe sì, il clima, no. E avremmo una temperatura media di 12 gradi. E in alcune zone non si potrebbe proprio fare. Oltre un certo limite, perché ovviamente essendo uno dei gas più climateranti rispetto agli altri, uh, crea questa pellicola, diciamo, all'interno, come, un, come una serra. Ma alla fine la serra, se voi vedete, non è che è formato da un, uno strato gigantesco, basta anche un leggero strato all'interno della serra per creare... Non so se siete mai entrati in una serra di estate. Si muore. <ride> e, e poi c'è un altro ovviamente un effetto di forza antropica che è la sedimentificazione e allo stesso mo momento la deforestazione delle nostre città soprattutto che è, eh, però è un cambiamento eh, più microclimatico perché la C2 sì, la CO2 ovviamente è una cosa che interessa a tutto il globo, ma che qua interessa le nostre città, che poi sostanzialmente non la maggior parte, da, che poi ci spiegherà bene il professor Teodoro Giorgio Agnes, noi viviamo, la maggior parte della gente vive nelle città, ci sono anche più della popolazione, più della, popolazione, più della metà, sì, poi spiegherà proprio questa cosa anche più. <ride> Eh, ora farò veramente un riassunto brevissimo perché se vorremmo parlare del clima della Terra ci dovremmo stare come la nostra Terra ha cioè miliardi di anni e il clima è che noi abbiamo studiato più o meno a 540 milioni di anni dovremmo almeno dedicare un anno <ride> per parlare <ride> Facciamo un altro seminario? Un altro un anno di seminario? 
Um, <clears throat> Per piace dire che il, il clima che noi stiamo vivendo è un battito di ciglia rispetto al vero battito di ciglia rispetto a tutto quello che Prima della tecnologia, come potete vedere, la so che ovviamente la storia è stata più riconosciuta da un attorato moderno, ci potrebbe dire che questa cosa è l'ultima. Uh, una cosa che per esempio non si sa è, è la differenza tra periodo glaciale e era glaciale, che sono due cose diverse. L'era glaciale è molto più grande rispetto a periodi glaciali, invece si trovano all'interno delle ere glaciali. Per cui oggi noi ci troviamo sostanzialmente in un'era glaciale, perché abbiamo i poli eh, ghiacciati. Eh, durante invece i glaciali, quindi non, quando non c'è la glaciazione, non c'è proprio i poli, non ci sono i poli. È una gra grande terra tipo Maldive comunque. <ride> Nera glaciale e in un periodo interglaciale, quindi a 10.700 anni dall'ultima glaciazione. No, 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 uh, no, 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 queste sono le ere, le ere interglaciali praticamente. Sì, sto dicendo così. Dell'ultimo. Ok. Siamo nel 4500 milioni di anni, no? Poi invece poi abbiamo iniziato le ultime glaciazioni, gli ultimi periodi interglaciali e noi ci troviamo per esempio tra 10.700 anni dall'ultima glaciazione che è quella più conosciuta e studiata. Ah, sì, praticamente sono la maggior parte dei fenomeni sono guidati dai cicli di Milinkovic che ho detto prima, praticamente eh, l'asse terrestre, quindi eh, dipendono soprattutto dal punto di vista astronomico. Quindi eh, la quantità di radiazione solare che arriva all'interno del, dell'atmosfera. Per esempio, oh, dall'ultima dall glaciazione noi abbiamo guadagnato, metto l'altra immagine così lo spiego meglio. Sì, 
Ho sentito questa cosa qua, non stavamo, ne stavamo diciamo, discutendo con il professor Teodoro. Diciamo che no, non è, no. È, è così percettibile questa cosa qui. Come per esempio l'asse terrestre che si sposta con i terremoti. Come l'asse terrestre che si sposta con i terremoti. Eh, parliamo di... Uh, sì, no, chiaramente, però è pure l'asse terrestre si sposta molto di più con i terremoti, però non, non per questo cambia. Le, I cicli di Newton, come dicevo, invece parliamo di, 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 anche di, di gradi, praticamente. Di, 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 è veramente... Infatti noi praticamente tra il 75 e il 70 anni abbiamo dovuto, abbiamo toccato l'ottimo climatico, cioè da, da dopo una glaciazione praticamente si inizia a riscaldare di nuovo la terra e eh, si tocca ovviamente un, un massimo che eh, grazie a 40 watt al metro quadro in più rispetto alla glaciazione. Quindi quei 40 watt al metro quadro in più che sono tanti, anche se impercettibili, non è tanto di radiazione solare no 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 eh, è l'inclinazione praticamente della fase terrestre l'inclinazione della fase terrestre permette una, la, la, la variabile di una reazione solare maggiore l'incidenza dei raggi solari con un'inclinazione leggermente maggiore della fase terrestre abbiamo un, una radiazione solare quindi di incidenza maggiore rispetto a eh, Ora sostanzialmente praticamente eh, abbiamo dovuto toccare l'ottimo climatico quindi se ci andiamo in anni qua con eh, ora dovremmo essere in via di decadenza del periodo interglaciale cioè dopo 10.700 anni dovremmo arrivare verso un nuovo periodo glaciale che non sappiamo quando arriverà, però più o meno dovremmo essere comunque in decadenza. Solo che eh, da, eh, noi avremmo abbiamo modificato qualcosa e che quindi questo periodo glaciale non dovre, potrebbe essere ritardato anche di non so quanti centinaia di migliaia di anni. Uno direbbe positivo, però non sappiamo in effetti se cosa abbiamo, siamo andati a modificare. <coughs> Uh, vado concludendo così poi lascio spazio al professore e per questo comunque eh, noi vogliamo comunque rispetto a parlare di CO2 che ne avrete sentito parlare comunque tantissimo, ci sono le conferenze, ci sono, ne parlano mai praticamente ovunque, polemiche, eccetera. Anche perché comunque la riduzione della CO2 che possiamo fare nei piccoli, nel nostro piccolo, è, 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 è decisamente così minore rispetto a quanto potrebbero fare i governi e gli accordi internazionali. Quindi, essendo giovani, è, per non disperarci, diciamo, ma do la CO2 a mente, allora cosa dobbiamo fare? Allora, noi invece cerchiamo di fare qualcosa nelle nostre città, nel nostro piccolo, ecco perché voglio parlare degli soli di valore, quindi del, del cambiamento che noi attuiamo nelle, nelle nostre città. <coughs> Ho 
Ecco perché comunque no. <coughs> ecco perché noi comunque come associazione stiamo cercando di fare questo percorso comunque nelle nostre zone, tenendo stazioni meteo non solamente nei centri urbani, o meglio, inserendo stazioni meteo sia nei centri urbani che nelle zone periferiche prossime ai centri urbani. Proprio perché, come potete vedere da questa grafica, abbiamo una differenza questa è alla stessa altitudine, questa altitudine alla stessa altitudine a 5 km di distanza. Una si trova in, proprio in paese, praticamente quasi vicino al centro del paese, mentre quest'altra stazione si trova in Cassano, ma a 5 km dalla San Terra, in campagna. In sì, campagna. Sì, per... Praticamente, e questo ce la spiegherà il professor Teodoro, ha fatto una domanda che praticamente lo spiegherà benissimo lui. E... Lo lascio a lui perché è più esperto di me. Sì. E quindi sì, comunque noi oltre che alle stazioni mobili fisse abbiamo anche delle stazioni mobili. È un nuovo sensore medio tracker che vuole potrà magari divertirsi e usarlo anche eh, qui. Eh, mi sono... Sono sempre... è, mio, è il mio compagno di viaggio. Allora, lo faccio vedere anche in diretta. Ce la porta lui. Allora, praticamente. la temperatura percepita reale quindi non riusciamo a vedere in effetti in questo sensore quanto non riusciamo a percepire realmente all'interno delle città e a mappare le città Il 
e dice umile. Sono umile. A volte si può pensare che l'isola di calore urbano sia solo Roma, C Milano, New York, grandi megalopoli. No, assolutamente no, perché noi l'abbiamo fatto in un paesino, Castano, Acqua Viva, Castano sono 10.000 abitanti, piccoli qui. Appena proprio entriamo nel centro urbano, la curva si ferma, parliamo di un incontro di 5 gradi. Anche perché ovviamente ne parlerà meglio ovviamente il professor Figlio, ma eh, la, gli alberi, comunque la vegetazione, non fanno solamente ombra, ma proprio perché loro comunque assorbono calore, comunque fanno evapotrespirazione, raffreddano l'aria all'interno dove si, si, si trova. Quindi non è solo questione proprio di ombre e di copertura, perché se no io metterei un telo e starei bene anche lì sotto. No, non è solo questo. <coughs> noi quando trasferiamo raffreddamento adiabatico della temperatura Eh, niente, io chiudo perché sono rubo il controtempo, vi lascio con questa bellissima immagine la campagna della Morgia, zona della Morgia, diciamo, la Santa Morgia. <ride> ok, ora mando e <ride> so che. Ci senti sempre, Teodoro? Hai sentito tutte sì. le mie cavolate che ho detto? Ho sentito tutto benissimo, non hai detto cavolate. <ride> okay. Cosa facciamo? Incominciamo? Sì, 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 vai. vai pure. Allora, ti chiedo assistenza e ti dirò next, please. Oh, ok, ok. I, I really thank you for your invitation. I'm really happy to be here with you. And... Uh, People define me an urban climatologist, but I, I really don't know what it means because I, you can see I didn't place the, uh, a title of my presentation because it could create a, a cultural bias. Uh, I think that uh, the title of the presentation could be cities because within the city there is a huge amount of things to learn and to be applied for. Uh, 
next generation world. And uh, cities is, is, is simple to say, city is a human settlement, but the human settlement, when forms the human settlement, the, the, the ancient example we have is one million to two thousand years ago. So we are in the, pardon me, in the Paleolithic period. But probably it develops during the Neolithic period. Can you hear me? Yes? During, during the Neolithic period. That takes place around uh, 10,000, 14,000 years ago. Uh, romantically, we can think that uh, the first uh, human settlement was placed when uh, we, the humankind made its uh, first fundamental discovery. That is not wheel, that is not fire, because God sent us fire. The most important discovery of the humankind was the way to maintain the fire. And probably someone, a man in the past, got a branch of a tree close to the fire. The branch did not fire, but it dried. And when it dried the wood, it becomes much more hard. With a fire in one of your hands, and with a harder uh, piece of brain in the other, probably humankind was able to get out from uh, the case the animals. And in that way, we formed the first settlement. We, we will see that this is not the only things that we have to form a settlement. We need another important thing goes to a settlement. That is who I can operate. In this first, to, to come again to the target of my speech, where you can see is the most famous heat wave of the world. It's the most famous, it is probably not important. Because we had other waves, and it waves is characterized by the temperature, the level of temperature, and by the duration. Duration. This is very famous because it happened in 2003, and as you can see, the rest of the more or less North Central Europe, and we had a huge amount of of uh, these obviously during it we do not see people falling down dead in the middle of the road but the effects are on fragile population people that is was already uh, in hospital for other pathologies and something like that and uh, this is a representation of what could happen. It surprises us because we, we already know the existence of heat waves, but not so intense. The next one, please. And uh, may I have the next one? The, the, oh, okay, yes. Here you can see again. Uh, right uh, corner, the heat wave, and uh, in the lower down corner, another effect of this is surely an anthropogenic effect is the formation of the heat island that is different in origin from the heat waves. Heat waves can be imputed to uh, global change. There are other concurrent explanations uh, that one of that is a uh, change in the local circulation pattern, but uh, the global change is assumed as the most respondent explanation for the formation of heat waves. We are 
experiences now an increase in the number of occurrences, in the occurrences of heat waves. Surely, 10 years ago was not so clear, but actually we can say that heat waves are increasing in number. But the heat islands are also important because they can couple with the heat waves, and so you have two effect that can alter the thermal regime of a city, they can overlap during a certain period. Obviously, uh, the period is one, it's the summer period that is the most important for the impact of uh, such effect on population specifically. In the, last, uh, sorry, in the left part, you can see different scale of uh, uh, effect. Daniele told you about meteorology, and we have a different scale in terms of frequency, in terms of space. That is very important to assess if something is climatological or meteorological. Daniele told you something about that, but it's very important, not only from a scientific point of view, but it's also very important, in, as in recent case in Italy, in my region in particular, to assess if a phenomenon was due to the climate, to the climate or to the meteorology, because uh, sometimes climate is utilized uh, to avoid to be guilty of something, and you say it's a climate problem. What I can do with the climate problem? But if a meteorological one probably is different. Probably you can do something to protect yourself and your population from that. Is not only in the end of gods, but you can really locally uh, act to do something. Please, the next one. The problem of uh, uh, urban adaptation is uh, not a problem of uh, only one city. This is Europe, and for every circle, you can see different circles of different dimensions. That means that it is more or less influenced by this effect. But you can see that uh, there is no escape in cities. In all the cities in Europe, more or less all the cities in Europe, are affected by the problem of uh, the uh, urban tile that is superimposed, which you can superimpose the problem of uh, um, urban heat waves. And uh, the next one. May I have the next? Thank you. So, is uh, again, we are in the ends of gods. No, this is not a recent. Uh, uh, slide, but uh, uh, anyway, is indicative of the actual situation. We create a city. We try to escape. The humankind try to escape from the natural environment creating city, because the natural environment is mostly dangerous. Because you have a snake, you have poison animals, you have uh, big animals. Uh, around and the urban settlements was created to escape from this naturality of the environment. With the, during the, the escape from this naturality, we have also made uh, different things from an uh, ethnological point of view. We have specialized our work. One single person today is not able probably to survive in a real natural environment. We are not able to uh, produce a table for ourselves, chairs. Probably we are not able to light a fire or something like that. The specialization is characteristic from Neolithics up to now, even more specialized. So we have people that take care of water, people that take care of building, uh, create building, people who take care of flow. So uh, uh, the coming back that is very romantic to uh, a not real natural environment means that you lose everything of that. You have actually a vibe. You cannot have just moving something in your 
or own available. You have to go to catch water for yourself and your family. The problem is that, the real problem is that in the world, we have a different distribution of richness, a different distribution of work, a different distribution of, of everything. Is The distribution is the real problem, not the capacity to produce. We have increased our capacity to produce everything, also for, for eating and in, during the year, probably you have heard about the, the, the famous, uh, um, how to say, uh, famous uh, conflict between Paul Simon and Ehrlich. That one decided that uh, in a few years uh, we have no resources available, and the other one say that probably with advent, uh, with advancement of science and technology. We will have more. It was called the Nasco Mess. I'm sorry, I, I forget now the term in English. The bet, the bet, the famous bet between Ehrlich and Simon. And Simon won, saying that we, we will have much more available in the future. The problem is the distribution. And concerning city, the problem in the world is that we have an increasing urbanization. Because uh, all the people, in particular young people, want to move in places that are more uh, attractive, that can furnish much more option for the uh, proper life. And uh, we have the same things at the world level, and the people move. People move, and you can see here the urbanization, level, the percentage of urbanization, in a few decades we will be only, all the humankind will be formed by citizens. The problem of citizenship is not only to live in a city, that is, as you live in a city. And the problem is the problem of dignity, quality, and something like that. You can see here the percentage of slums, the type of suburban area, for example, in Africa, we have a, a small urban uh, percentage, but you can see the uh, incredible number of slums. 71% in uh, Latin America is uh, quite the same, it's very high. It means that the people move from a village and go to a city, to a megalopoly, but moves to go to dream under a bridge, the, the, a, a real problem of uh, dignity and equality. Yes. The next one, please. I told you about water. This is not a recent uh, slide again, but uh, the, the situation is quite worse than this today. You can see the megalopolis, people move, and the huge numbers of cities with more than millions of people living there is very close to the water, because we need water. The, the problem that we have no enough space to support a population of uh, 10, 12, billion people is not true. There is not such kind of limit. Gods have no right somewhere that is an upper limit. The limit is, I can say, the advancement of scientific and technological uh, knowledge is due to, again, distribution. This is the real limit in our world. Please, the next one. I, I want to go back directly now to also to the question. Uh, the next one is, okay. Uh, you ask if we can see difference between urbanized area, industrialized area, naturalized area. I say not natural, but naturalized because for example, in my region, there are no real natural area 
only some things uh, linked to the Apennine area, but in the plain, everything was managed by men during the Roman Empire. We have uh, uh, the agriculture, agriculture that I, I forgot to say that uh, was one of the important changes in humankind from uh, hunters, we become farmers. Uh, as hunters, we, we have uh, meat that is much more important as a content of proteins, but is not uh, sure you can hunt sufficiently meat for you. The agriculture is much power in terms of protein, something like that, but you can manage it and you can assure the meat, uh, the meals for your family and your community. And so, the, uh, for example, the Po Valley is real, an example of agriculture, specialized agriculture nowadays. And you can see difference from the different areas. These are the behavior of temperature, air temperature and surface temperature uh, during the day. During the day, at the surface temperature, that is the temperature that you measure directly at the ground, and the temperature are very different. During the night, you can see that they are overlapping. This is a property of the material you place in your city. What is really different from the naturalized uh, world and the urban world is that not only the danger you have, uh, you can suffer in the naturalized world, but in the natural world, but is the presence of different materials. We specialize ourselves, we specialize the construction of material, the construction of buildings, and we have very different behavior from the built area and the natural area. And you can see that during the night, uh, in the lower images, you can see that the air temperature and the surface temperature become equal, more or less equal. This is a very important fact in the urban area because it uh, um, had a great influence on the people that uh, is sleeping. And uh, you have no only how to say normal, physiologically normal means uh, uh, people of 13 years old with no pains or something like that. But you have also, for example, population. You have an uh, elderly person and you have a younger person and you have personal personalized. And so if you change the, the, the temperature in the air temperature because of this phenomenon, you can also affect these people, affect the rhythm of the sleeping of these people. They could have no recovery of that. That is very important. Is it not only very important for them, not only very important for us because they can be part of our family, but it's very important for our economy because a people that is suffering in hospital has a real great cost for the community. And if you decrease the kind of cost, you can have free money for making something different. So thus is very important to protect fragile population, or let me say I'm joking, or you kill them, or you try to save them too bring them to a level that can live not hospitalized not something like that and you also get have free money for making something better for you for instruction for other things the next one please i was joking yes i do not say that kill them but so this, this is the problem to make better city. Now we say this term resilient city. Resilient is a very, very good term is utilized in metallurgy. And um, anyway, now it's widely utilized also for everything is related to climate, in particular to the city regeneration. 
but it's an old concept. This is a book of Le Corbusier. Is I think I placed the, no, I did not place. I think it's 1932, something like that, 1928, 1928. He wrote that we are creating cities that do not defend our dignity. That is the very important things. Because obviously we escape from the natural environment, but we forgot something important of the natural environment. Daniele told you about vegetation. Vegetation is one of the most important things we can utilize for mitigation and for adaptation. I say also mitigation, even normally, uh, vegetation, you can hear about vegetation for the terms adaptation in the climate change issue. But it is also important from the point of view of mitigation. Because uh, we can see after some things, but I don't want to forget. Daniele told you about <coughs> adiabatic cooling. Vegetation is an adiabatic cooler and it does not act only in terms of uh, shading, only in terms of evapotranspiration. But if we apply the second principle of thermodynamics, we know that the heat goes from an hottest uh, floor to a coldest one. And vegetation is a self-maintaining medium of temperature. Vegetation is a living thing and want to survive. And because of this search for surviving, vegetation moves uh, stones, stomata, and something like that, and try to maintain the temperature that is optimal, optimal for it. And in this way, it subtract, it subtract heat from our buildings, because from the second principle of thermodynamics, buildings are very generous and want to uh, heat up the vegetation. They look in front of them, the building, and vegetation say, no thanks, I don't need that, and try to evaporate and maintain its temperature lower than and the building that is very, very generous gives heat continuously up to the point where the vegetation in front of him and the building at the same temperature. But it means that you don't need air conditioning in this way. And if you do not need air conditioning, you do not need frigories to maintain the internal of your partner colder than outside. And it means that you can switch off your air conditioning. And it means that you switch off your conditioning, you do not consume energy and you do not emit CO2. This is mitigation, is not adaptation, is a reduction of CO2. But it needs something important. It needs a design, an urban design to obtain this. Please, the next one. You, you can see the importance of this concept in the upper uh, graph on uh, left. There are there you can see the different temperature from the uh, suburbans from the rural boundaries of a city and the center of the city. And you can see that we have many points, black and white. We can plot this together, but obtaining uh, a very huge scatter. But if we divide this point in, for example, the point that belongs to European city, and the points that belong to American city, 
on the east axis you have the population number uh, 1,000 people up to 1 million, 10 million people. You can see that you have two clear different uh, functions that describe the, the better regression line. This means, that, this means, first means that the four white or black dot, you have a different uh, dif a, a different difference between the center of the city and the rural part surrounding the city. And you can see that all the American and all the European are distributed on the two different lines. This is a cultural marker. This is not the physical one. The European city acting in a very different way from the American city. That it means that the way the European have de designed the city is different in energetic term, enthalpy, uh, thermodynamic term, from the American city. And obviously, uh, you can immediately figure out the main differences between Europe and America. The, the other graph is related to uh, things that should be studied much more in deep. That is the behavior of um, the ratio between the length, the orthogonal length of uh, the street and the height of the building that you can see that there, there is a function when you have something that seems a functional, uh, what well, means that something physical there is inside. And we can see that uh, after. <coughs> uh, the next one, please. <coughs> that is the representation of the um, heat island. And you can see that you have the, the peak of the heat is uh, placed in the bar center of uh, the building area and it decreased uh, going down to the servers or to, to, to the, the rural area. Next one, please. Let, let me know uh, when I have to finish. Um. Ten minutes? Yes, ten minutes will be great, uh, Teodoro. Thank you. This, this is a very important thing. If we have a, a distribution of temperature within the city, it means that we have higher temperature in the most built part of the city. Just a moment, Teodoro. Just a moment. Yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry. We are going to... Okay. Okay. We have the highest temperature in uh, the center of the city because we have materials that exchange the solar radiation is uh, captured, but this material is there is no particular partition is transformed in long wave in heat. But it means that you are eating the surface, eating the surface even between the surface and uh, the air, the, ex the heating exchange is low. If you continue to pumping heating, you also eat the air. If you eat the air, the air decreases in density. If the air decreases in density, the air lifts up. When the air lifts up, at a certain level in the atmosphere, the uh, this part of the air this air masses start to cool, and if they cool, they start to go back down to the ground again, and you have the formation of a secondary circulation. This is the reason why more or less all the public administration fails to control the pollution 
in the, our urban centers because the pollution tends to recirculate even if you have cars at the boundary of the city you will have always present a flow that is coming from the outside the city going down the center of the city because the center of the city is creating a secondary circulation and it means that you when you move air you also move pollutant and bad meaning and you transport again the pollution in the center of the city so again you can decide to regulate or to block completely block this problem by avoiding circulation traffic within the city is a very important political decision but if we decide to close one day a week a city and the other not is a simply stupid because you recirculate everything all the time so you have to decide you have to decide even to decide to do not be reelected the next time because the political decision generated this because citizens decided to vote for you or not this is the reason why we have sometimes uh, we are uh, trembling in deciding something for the city the next one so we, we have a different way to uh, Pardon me one second. We can decide different kind of city, different kind of development. And there is no an existing model that you can apply all the time, all the places, all the people, all the citizens. There are different kinds of organization. And this kind of organization is strictly related to the way of life for your territory. You have to decide to protect your people, applying something that belongs to the idem sentir, to the very sure way to feel your life, your territory, your city. And is not a simple way to decide. This is a political problem. The next one. This is an example of, we, we talked about solar radiation that is captured by the building materials. That is true, but this is a direct responsibility of urbanists and architects because the radiation capture is not uh, uh, neutral the way to capture is it is a function of the texture of the building we created at the surface you can see here uh, this is called the um, sky view factor that is a way to see from the surface how the materials at the surface see the solar radiation in the upper uh, left side you can see a circle that is a circle it is a, a camera with a, a, with a mounted a fish eye that looks up and what is seeing is the sky 360 degrees of free sky if you go down the other you can see up to the right part uh, right corner right lower corner you can see as the sky is seen at the surface every building around it means that if the sky move in a certain direction probably your street at the surface your street will be in the shade all day long but if the sun moves 90 degrees from the first direction i told you probably you will have the sun radiation inside your street canyon all day long and all day long the sun radiation that is normal shortwave radiation 
will be captured with a different uh, multiple reflection by the building materials and will be transformed in long wave radiation. Long wave radiation means heat. And you suffer inside the Urban Canyon of this heat. This is another direct responsibility of the people that is creating the master plan of your city is not because of a very far decision on CO2. This is a direct decision of your administration. This is a direct decision of you as voting for this administration. We are creating our future anyway. The next one, please. This, in the next one, you have a simplification of what I already told you. Uh, a surface, a plain surface, an urban canyon, a moderate urban canyon, and a deep urban canyon. In the deep urban canyon, you have multiply reflection. And more or less, as in the, uh, what is the God of St. Patrick, St. Patrick, there is a place in Italy where, where you have um, a deep construction that go down to, to, the, to the ground. And the, the, there is an animal on my screen. Okay, is it outside? And uh, um, you can see the stars even during the day because all the diffuse radiation is uh, absorbed by, by the wall. And uh, this is the same effect. The next one, please. Materials. We are creating our heat island. Materials are different behavior given the albedo, the surface optical properties, and given by the emissivity of the materials. When we decide to regenerate the city, something like an avenue, a street, a canyon, can, an urban canyon, something like that, when we decide something that is beautiful to see, uh, is not sure that is also beautiful to live, because the property of the material I'm choosing will decide about the local microclimate of that street. We absolutely have to link the architects and urbanists with the civil engineer to take into account these properties of the materials, not only for beauty, but only for living. But we have to mix these two concepts in regeneracy. The next one, please. That is an example of my hometown. We have three historical uh, floors, uh, public floors, that are um, they are called San Pietrini, Basoli, is an Italian definition of, uh, but with uh, these materials have different reflective properties, different emissivity properties. And uh, we decided to um, place in a certain part of the city uh, <coughs> a new public transportation system and for placing the new uh, public transportation system, we have placed asphalt all along the city. And there started discussion between um, the public administration and uh, the people who have uh, a special interest to the, the historical uh, heritage of the city. And they, they decided that, uh, that the public administration says that uh, the historical uh, elements of uh, floor were not historical. Every 10 years they change, so there is no reason to preserve. But the very real problem, I measured that, was that uh, changing the surface, albedo properties of the material from the historical one to the asphalt, we have a real black surface 
and the real black surface is absorbing everything of solar radiation. Why the historical material reflected part of the solar radiation. And we had an immediate increase of three degrees in temperature for this part of the city. If you do that in all the part of the city, you have a very big problem. I'm going rapidly to because uh, okay, I uh, may you next one, please. Okay, I, I, I already told you about that. You can see there the temperature are different for different side, for the rural side, the industrial side, and the central side is different because a different density of uh, the building, the massive uh, content of the building changes the temperature and the behavior, the trend of the temperature during the day. The next one, we can assess the uh, wellness of the people. We can measure in a certain way, is parametral, obviously. All the time there will be the person that feel free, will feel cold, normally is the women in your bed, and the people that has a very, uh, feels hot all the time, but there is a way to parametrize this, uh, they are called the ASHRAE uh, regulation, and you can uh, determine the um, wellness you feel inside your city. So with the wellness, you can make decisions. The next one, please. So you have something that you can utilize. So uh, please, again, again. Uh, the next one, the next one again. You, you can decide, you can measure the wellness. You can link the wellness to the fragile population. You, from a medical point of view, you can define how fragile population is within a wellness range. For example, uh, it is possible in, uh, in this scheme, it is possible to obtain an it related elderly risk index. So we have an index for population for the elder population and uh, uh, you can parameterize this and you can proceed to doing what please the next one this is a map of different cities where we overlap the, the colleagues of my institute overlap the temperature of the city and with the census we, we have a, a perfect definition of where people live the name of the people the age of the people the work of the people the sanitary condition of the people we have no information about the name there is in the sense of the name but we have no available that to link the presence of elderly population in the city and to link this to overlap these two layers and to have a perfect image of vulnerability of population that lives in a specific quarter in a specific uh, street and we are working on that just to preserve elderly i told you what because it's important to preserve elderly is also important, I'm not joking now, to preserve elderly because they have the knowledge, they have the tradition, they have a huge amount of things that is very important. They move from the elderly to the young people. This is the real important reason. The culture is the reason. The next one, please. And I'm really going to the end. This is an example of what we can do now with the fluid dynamic approach, we have models. Policymaker no has no escape. Have no escape. They have to respond to population because we can measure everything we want now. We can say 
You, as a policymaker, you are stupid because you have not applied, you have not asked to apply for that because we can measure almost everything and say where and when and in which way to make something to increase the wellness of your own population. This is an example. We, on the left, on the right, we have the real uh, condition of a park in an uh, Italian city. And we, as in the movie Sliding Doors, we imagine that uh, the park was not uh, uh, survived to the new urbanistic regulation. And we placed in the same uh, space of the park, we place uh, the, a typical uh, arrangement of buildings of uh, this kind of city. And we saw immediately changes in wellness, immediately changes in uh, uh, flow, uh, urban air flow within the city. Uh, in, in the upper part, there is the, the, the park. On the right, there is the part, the existing park. And the experiment we do, we did changing basins, building, placing building with some greens because, uh, you know, the render renders from an architect architectonic point of view needs some trees and anyway we demonstrate the importance of the system of the park i think that i have the last one but the really last if i have one minute more in, a, in my city they decided to change vegetation in a square and we measure how the previous vegetation influences the wellness of the population in the square in respect to the new uh, urbanistic arrangement. So it is possible with this kind of models to go and say, hey, please, place again my tree. If it was the same tree, not the an inland one. The next, really finished. All, everything I told you was already written by Le Corbusier. Le Corbusier was not an architect, was not an urbanist, was an atmospheric climatologist because he placed the materials of the urbanism are the sun, the sky, uh, the trees, the I'm sorry, I share um, the iron, the uh, Simon, the agglomerate, and in this order and in this hierarchic way. So he fully understood what the city is made of. Some example of. Uh, Le Corbusier project, honestly, do not follow precisely the indication they furnish us. I really thank you for your attention. We are going to talk to the microphone. Thank you very much. 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 Professor, there's, there are some questions. Can uh, we have a moment to ask you some questions, please? Yes, for sure. And I'd like to ask for the people that want to ask questions to come here so you can also be in the video and the professor. Dear professor, thank you so much. Hello. Is it good to have Hello, professor. Thank you so much Hello. for this nice well prepared um, module, let's say. I just wanted to ask in your expertise and as a well known ecologic uh, person who you might be, uh, which are the techniques, uh, currently techniques? in order to implement better uh, 
better structure for the European uh, environment. I mean, starting from the way how we build uh, our uh, residential places for businesses, uh, continuing with the material use, and in the same way while uh, caring about those environmental causes. Absolutely. You have a huge amount of solution yeah. to apply. Starting from the materials, for example, you, you can place green roof or connecting roof. In Europe, with some limitation, is very easy in the uh, United States to have cool roof. But in Europe, we have limitation that we do with the cultural heritage we have to preserve. But actually, we can make something on the materials because we, it's possible for modern technology to utilize <clears throat> new materials that are very similar to the old one, but with an increase level and increased albedo, or to treat the old materials with uh, new uh, possible like raisins or something like that to increase, for example, albedo. So this is a first approach is based on materials. The other approach is based on nature-based solution. That nature-based solution are, uh, how to say, green solution, blue solution, gray solution. And another approach is linked to the water, the SATS, the uh, urban sewage uh, drainage system. So we can utilize a great solution and such to obtain the water we need for the vegetation. I told you about vegetation is um, an adiabatic cooler, but to, for it functions, it needs water. Without water is just something dead, not an adiabatic cooler. So we need water and we do not need power water. So we can uh, collect water. Obviously, the, the problem of bacteria, viruses, or something like that. So we have to treat this water in some way. But <clears throat> it's not potable. We can utilize not potable water for that. We can also utilize not potable water for other things within the apartments. Obviously, we are actually utilizing potable water. That is, uh, how to say, um, very, very okay, thank you so much for the answer. It was well thought for sure. And I, I just got a, a, an expand of my insight for whether this quite, I mean, whether this cause will go uh, progressively. I just wanted to ask, which is your forecast for the upcoming 20 years, starting by this moment? What's going to happen on the future, considering the way how the environment is, without bringing out those ideas whether we should um, fight in order to make it the environment a, a better place for all the inhabitants, not only for the humans, but in the in the way how it is. Do you think that we have a bit of hope in order to go and, let's say, hug those environmental values? Now, the, the, the main problem in my career was that I was in the middle. So in the middle means that you receive a punch from the from all the people around you. So I am pretty positively oriented because I think that we can do a huge amount of things. We have actually the technology to do these things. So we do not have to wait for new uh, something to discover. We have a huge amount of things to do. The problem is uh, to make the right change. I'm not sure that we are actually indicating the right change. Uh, I think that the main problem is that the people have to live better. People to live better means you have to create better cities, better services. That, and in this way, people live better. Uh, so I, I am 
positively oriented and I think that in 20 years that is my expected time for life uh, on the average I think that uh, we, we we will have no problem but for you that you have a, a life expectation greater than mine it's better you start to move and to make something without yeah. slogans thank you thank you so much all my pleasure we wish you way more than that, Professor. Very long. Wait is enough. Thank you, Professor. I'm Regilia Fusha, a public health specialist, and really enjoyed your insightful presentation. Actually, it makes me feel uh, kind of appreciative about the small garden that I have in the suburb building where I live in Albania. So my question is, you spoke about the policy, uh, policymakers and in decision-making uh, <laughs> level, actually, and the action that the policymakers should take. But since we are here in academy full of uh, young activists, what are, uh, I would say, your advice about the young activists, some small steps that we can take uh, as individuals, but if, even as, I would say, peer educators to improve uh, somehow the situation of climate change with simple actions? Thank you. The, the first one I already told you to your colleague, uh, the very important things is very important that there are the activists, because it's an important issue. But the activists have to think not in a black and white manner and try to avoid slogans, because sometimes, I know, slogan is an important thing because report a simplified frame to the people to convince people to move. But sometimes slogans are too simplistic and can draw you aside the right way because there is a huge amount of interest, both sides. And you have to be really aware of that. So you have to move to study a lot and try to find out when someone have a direct interest in furnish you wrong information. This is a very difficult thing, but it's the things you have to look with very, very high, uh, to say, uh, precision. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think, Professor, you satisfied the curiosity of everyone because your uh, talk was very comprehensive. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was really an honor to have you here and to uh, explain to us all these um, very big topics that uh, usually the, the common knowledge of the public uh, doesn't get. So. Thank you very much. I was really honored by your invitation. And I think we can close the connection. So wish you a wonderful rest of the day, Professor. Ci diamo appuntamento per un seminario però in presenza la prossima volta. Assolutamente, professore. Non vedo l'ora di averla qui a Matera. Molto volentieri. Sempre volentieri a Matera. Yes, I'll uh, let you. Ah, sì, grazie. Ah, molto piacere. Grazie. Alla prossima. Arrivederci. Ciao. Ciao.